I want to reiterate that I'm not here to say people have to get vaccinated. This is such a hot topic. I'm here to talk about health topics in general, that if an outbreak occurs, I'm going to give some information uh, and talk about it with you and talk to you about pros and cons. So it's just, again, about giving you information, explaining things, um, not telling anybody what they should or shouldn't do. Uh, I have my own personal feelings about it, and everybody else has their own personal feelings too. Measles is on the rise. What's going on? So it appears that they're thinking it has to do with travel, and the other biggest reason is low vaccination rate. So um, getting a vaccine, the first vaccine is 93% effective, and with a booster, it's 97% effective against, me against me measles. So in the year 2023, the entire year in the United States, there were 58 cases. In the year so far of 2024, January, February, March, there are already 64 cases. So that's a significant increase in measles outbreak. Measles is highly contagious. It's an airborne disease and it stays in the air up to two hours. So, or if a person's on the elevator, if somebody is at the grocery store, you're standing in line, they're coughing, they have measles, they walk away, it is sitting there for two hours for you to breathe in. Okay, not to scare, but just to make you aware. There's a lot of little things like this that people just don't know. So I want to help people just to break it down in an easier format to help you understand what a disease is. Is it really a big deal? What's the big deal? Does it matter that it's on the increase or that there's an outbreak somewhere? Yes and yes. Um, and why? Why would that be? It is estimated that 128,000 people died from measles in the year 2021. That's the latest number at the moment. Um, and most of those people who died were children age five and under. It's completely preventable with a vaccine that is 97% effective in... So what are the five symptoms? What are the five symptoms of measles? That would be runny nose, conjunctivitis, red, watery eyes, coughing, sneezing, and a full body rash. It might start out as a small rash and then becomes a full body rash. Despite the availability of this vaccine, the measles vaccine, which comes in a vaccine called an MMR for measles, mumps, rubella, um, these deaths are still occurring and people are still very reluctant to get vaccinated. Um, I'm not here to say do it or not do it, but if you have a vaccine out there that could um, help in an outbreak and definitely help a person not die or become severely ill, then I think it's just logically a good thing. The MMR vaccine has been out since 1963. It does not cost that much. There are a lot of programs in place worldwide to help people get vaccinated. So who should not get the vaccine? Uh, who should not get the vaccine is somebody who's had a life-threatening reaction to the first vaccine. So if somebody got uh, the first one and had a, a life-threatening bad allergic reaction, then it would be wise to not get the booster. And a life-threatening reaction is different than a normal reaction from a vaccine. So a normal reaction would be redness and swelling at the site, may, maybe feeling tired, maybe getting a little fever, or maybe getting some body aches, headache, you might get nothing, you might get some or all of those symptoms. That is just a normal reaction that your body is having to a vaccine, which is a positive thing that's happening. It might, it's not comfortable, but it doesn't mean that it's a life-threatening reaction or because of that, uh, you don't want to get a vaccine because one of them is deadly and the other is not. Not getting it can be deadly if you contract measles. The other person or people group should, that should not get vaccinated with the MMR are people who have a serious or significant immune system problem. So 
again, you're going to have to talk with your provider about this. Am I a good candidate? Is it okay for my child to get this? And that's what you should discuss this with. Any of your concerns, discuss with your provider. Transmission of measles. Measles is something that can be contagious for four days before you have an outbreak or even before you have symptoms. That's how it is with a lot of these illnesses, unfortunately. The onset so of symptoms uh, might take one to two, up to two weeks or even up to 18 days. So that's called an incubation period. It's the time from exposure to the time that another person might come down with the symptoms and the virus. Do antibiotics help with measles if you get it? No, they don't. Um, measles is a virus and what you might get antibiotics for or a person might get antibiotics for is to prevent a secondary infection such as uh, pneumonia, that kind of thing. You can get secondary problems, ear infections, respiratory problems, and so on. Did I mention how you pass it around? Sneezing, coughing, um, sharing utensils, and uh, breathing. You breathe it out, you got measles, you're breathing it out, coughing it out. That's it is advised that women who get the MMR vaccine um, should not get pregnant in the next month. Now, sometimes things happen. So just talk with your provider about that, but that is the suggestion. Delaying the va getting the vaccine is a good idea if the child is sick, if the person is ill, actively ill, or has a fever. It's the MMR administered. It can be given subcutaneously, which is just in the tissue, um, not in the muscle, or it can be given intramuscular or IM, which is straight into the muscle of an arm or a leg. Um, now, when we gave it years and years, a hundred years ago, we gave it only um, sub-Q, but there's a different type that's out now that can be given either way. And here is the MMR schedule. If this kind of content is interesting to you, if it's informative, could you please pass it on and share with others? Also, like and subscribe it's free nobody's going to find you nobody's going to think anything different of you if you like and subscribe to a specific youtube channel nobody's going to know anything nobody tracks anybody for these sorts of things so i'm asking to like and subscribe because that's the only way that this kind of content or small channel information gets out thank you for watching